welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at how to make a dot plot to represent statistical distributions. This plot goes by many other different names, but we're going to call it a dot plot. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take a series of data points and then just plot them all in a line so that we can see that distribution. We're going to have a look at how to do that in views. And we're also going to talk just a little bit about how to make it easy to look at also. in views. And so with that, let's jump right in. I've already started up views and I've already loaded the data I want. And we're going to look at stock market returns for the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. This data looks like this. I have a series of years and a series of returns. These returns are fractional instead of percentage, but we can have a look at that later. If I jump down to the bottom, you can see that there are different lengths, and that's quite all right. Um, we have a longer record of some of these than others, but that's not going to matter for us. So let's go back real quick to views and see how we might want to plot this. I think the easiest way is within a graph to plot x, y data. Essentially, we want to make a scatter plot where we arrange points in a line along the x-axis. And if they're all in a line, that basically means that they all need to have the same y-coordinate. And we don't have that quite yet in views. That's all right. If I go back to our data, I can add that in. So I have S&P 500, S&P 500 returns, and then I could call this S&P position. And then let's just say I want this at position one. Doesn't really matter what. And I'll establish a pattern and then double click here and that will fill out all the way down to the bottom. I can do the same here for NASDAQ. NASDAQ position. And then let's put this at position two. Again, it doesn't matter too much as you'll see, but I think using one and two is gonna make it a little bit easier for us to see what's going on. I have too much data here, which Views might squawk about and it might not, but let's just delete it so we don't have to worry about it. And then we can go back to the Dow. Dow position, let's call this three. And then if I just double click, go down and check, we're okay. So now I'll save this, then I'll go back to views. I'll say refresh. And now I have also added the positions. So let's just go ahead and add in the S&P 500. I want to plot the return along the X for this particular plot. You could choose to put it along the Y, it doesn't really matter. I think it looks better horizontal. So I'll say the X is the S&P 500 returns and the Y is S&P 500 positions. And now you can see that I have a whole series of dots. They're halfway cut off because views is set the Y to automatically go from one to two. I don't want that. If I want to see everything, how about we do something like 0.5 to 1.5? And that puts it right in the middle. One thing that you'll see is that now for these S&P 500s, there's a lot of points, but I can't see them all because they're sort of covered up. What can I do about that? Well, I think if I just go in here to formatting, we can solve this problem. The biggest issue is that we have a solid opaque color and so points that are on top of other points cover them up completely. I could change this color to be transparent. For instance, 100% transparent, which is the same as hiding it. So let's just click off that. And you can see it's a little bit better because now I can see where there's a high density of points because they're completely blocked out by the overlapping outlines. But I could also, instead of hiding this, give it a little bit of color. Let's say it's 90% transparent. And now there's a little bit of fill. We could do the same thing here for the outline. What if this was 90% transparent? And now you start to see what it looks like when you have these overlapping points. I kind of don't like having the outline here because it makes everything look fuzzy, almost like my eyes are blurry. And I don't like the way that looks. Even if I set this to be the same color, like red, I kind of get the same effect. And so in these dot plots, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just hide the outline actually. It still looks blurry, but this is kind of the blurriness that I'm looking for, in my opinion. I could even maybe 
up the opacity a little bit, and now I can really see where the overlaps are, and I can see even individual points sort of okay. One issue, and the reason why it kind of does look blurry, is because I have these circles. And it's called a dot plot because traditionally you use circles, but there's really no reason I have to use a circle. And so what if instead of a circle, I use a square? To me, this looks even better, where now I see like bands of high density where before I didn't. If I wanted to have something where I wasn't so, so worried about overlap, because it's not so wide, I could have a vertical bar. And now I also can see gaps sometimes. I could also do something like have a vertical line. And now I don't see anything because that line is actually this here. So let's just go ahead and unhide that line. And I probably don't need quite so much transparency. 50% is probably not quite enough. How about 75? And so there's another way to see the returns. So I think for us, either these vertical lines or this vertical bar, either one works pretty well. But if you use the vertical bar, then I would hide the line. That's just me. So to me, that actually looks all right. I might prefer this slightly more than the lines. It's sort of up to you what you prefer and what you don't. Since we're here, I'm gonna leave it as that. If I wanted to add in another, let's just say this is the SMP, what I could do real simply is just copy and paste this now that I have the formatting looking how I want it to look, and then just say I want the DAO return and the DAO positions. I can't see it because this y-axis doesn't go high enough. And remember the highest position that we gave this was three. So let's change this instead of going from 0.5 to 1.5 to 3.5. And now I'll be able to see the DAO. And then I can call this DAO. And then lastly, we have the NASDAQ. So let's go ahead and put that in. And then I can have the NASDAQ return and the NASDAQ position. And now I have three different plots. I know green's not great because now I have red on green. So let's just real quick go into this NASDAQ. Let's change this fill from auto to something else. How about we have our colors that I have built in? So there's blue. We'll call this uh, that sort of like purpley color we saw before. And again, I have these all set up so that they're ready to go for me. I don't want the green. How about this orange? That looks okay. If you set up a color palette and save it in here, you'll also have these accessible, but of course we can just choose from here as well. Okay, the last thing I would say is that let's change the X axis just for this particular plot. So we're not really thinking about dot plots so much anymore, but let's just think about that X axis to me, I would want to say percent return. This isn't percent, that's fraction, but they're related by a factor of 100. And so at this scale, I'll just change it from one to 100. Now I have the percent return. I also think it's nice to have symmetric limits so that it looks symmetric. And so I'll change this to go from minus 100 to 100. And then I know in the middle is basically where there's no return. This side, I've lost money and this side, I've gained money. And of course we could go in and divide up the data set and make those all look different as well if you wanted. But I don't think we need to do that here. Again, this is not the point we're necessarily trying to make. And so with that, I think we now have a reasonable looking dot plot-esque plot. We haven't used circles because we thought the bars looked better, but you could use circles, you could use diamonds or anything else you want. The point here is just to arrange the data you have in a line. And we've seen how to do that now using the XY widget in views. So with that, go out and make some nice dot plots if you like.